Hey guys, welcome to my reading wrap up for the months of April and May. So the very first book I finished was I finally, finally, finally finished The Princess Stat by Anne Rice. I think I ended up giving this book two stars. So it's really hard to summarize the plot of this book because the plot was pretty much non-existent. I'll link a couple reviews that I really like below. Um, I found a couple that said a really funny and accurate way. Um, basically this book feels like it has no plot. The characters don't really have a motive for anything that they do. I actually had to ask someone online what they thought the motives were and they were just like, well, it's not really explicitly stated. All of the, the point of view chapters of Lestat, I had to keep flipping through and double checking that they were Lestat because he acts completely unlike any of the other books. Like, the only thing I can conclude from this book is that Anne Rice is on drugs and they're not even good drugs. And apparently she's writing another book. There's supposed to be one more book in this series coming out after this. She had actually retired this series a few years ago, but brought it out of retirement for this book and the next one. And I'm scared, but I'm probably going to read the next book just because I have read all the other books in this series and I may as well find out what happens. The next book I finished was The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. And I gave that book four and a half out of five stars. It was my first David Mitchell experience and I totally, totally loved it. So The Bone Clocks is about this young girl who runs away from home when she's a teenager and just happens to leave home on the same night that her youngest brother goes missing. The first chapter is from her point of view and the last chapter and we're following this girl throughout her life starting from the age of 15 or 16 until she's an old granny. And she tends to encounter these paranormal or um, unusual people and the chapters in between the first and last ones um, are from other people's points of view who are connected to her in some way. So we get to see her kind of like from the sidelines or as a secondary type of character and how her life affects these other people. It's really hard to explain. David Mitchell kind of has this complicated way of storytelling, but I really liked it and I really liked the theme of magical realism, which I've heard is a big theme in the majority of his books. And I really can't wait to read the rest of his books because I thought that one was really great. The next book was The Story of Stuff by Annie Leonard. This is a non-fiction book that's basically about conservationism versus consumerism. The book basically covers where all the stuff that we buy comes from, what happens when we use it, and what happens to it when we're done using it. And I wish everyone on the planet would read this book because it really, really makes you think and analyze everything you're doing to the planet and even to your own health, your family's health. There was a very depressing part in this book where I had to take a break from it. I was just having a bad day at work and I had to put it down for a couple days and then go back to it when I felt better. But um, there is kind of a message of hope and what we can do to kind of preserve what we have left of the resources on Earth. And I really wish everyone would read this book and just take a second to kind of look at how much we actually consume and what we need from that stuff that we are consuming and what we can do with it when we're done with it. And I gave that book four out of five stars. The next book is Say Hello to Zorro by Carter Goodwitch. I didn't write this book, it's another preschool children's book. And like I said in my previous wrap up video, I've just been picking up a couple kids books here and there to read for my friend's kid. But I didn't love that book either. It's basically about this dog who has another dog brought into his household and they have to learn to basically share and get along. But I think I'm gonna give up on kids books for the time being because I just don't enjoy them that much. And my friend's kid is like two months old, so he's not gonna be reading for a while. The next book I finished is Full Catastrophe Living by John Kabat-Zinn. And I started this book a while ago. I st actually started it last year, but this book is about mindfulness and I'm not gonna go into a whole explanation about what mindfulness is because I want this video to be kind of short, but I started reading this book when I was just in a place uh, when I was too stressed out and busy to actually even consider being mindful. Sum it up, it's basically about how we as a, a society value being busy all the time and working hard all the time and that's not really what makes us happy. We have to learn to just be instead of doing things all the time. And I didn't rate that book either because it's nonfiction. And then I finished a graphic novel which I mentioned in my previous wrap up video and it was The Interview with the Vampire Claudia's Story by Ashley Marie Witter. And I kind of ended up skimming the last like 
quarter of the book because it was very, very similar to the original story. I will say the art was absolutely beautiful in it and I really loved the artwork, but overall didn't add that much to the actual series of The Vampire Chronicle, so I gave that book three stars. And next, I read another graphic novel called Pandemonium, written by Chris Wooding and drawn by Cassandra Diaz. Judging it from the cover, I was expecting it to be kind of like a kind of half-hearted like anime ripoff type of thing, but I actually ended up loving the book so much. It was so funny and I thought the drawings were really great in it. It is definitely like an uh, rooted in anime style, but not exactly like that. The story is about this guy who has to pretend to be a missing prince and there's kind of like this mystery that unravels that he has to unravel from there. But I took this out from the library and I'm about to order it off Amazon right now because I loved it that much and I need to read it again and I need to just have it. And finally, I finished this book called Go Green, Live Rich by David Bach. I just picked this up because I saw it was ready to go at the library and I needed a short book because I was waiting on another audiobook from the library and that one was only about three hours. I didn't actually buy into that title that you can be rich by living green and when I read the book I definitely wasn't convinced. It's a very very basic basic book about a more environmentally friendly and I would only recommend it if you have literally never recycled anything in your life or if you've never even considered the topic before. Um, pretty much everything in the book I already knew, <laughs> so I can't really recommend. And then I was book hunting a bit this month and I treated myself to a few books. I had a gift card for chapters and I just grabbed a few out of the sale section that looked really interesting. But the first one I grabbed is Love in the Time of Global Warming by Francesca Lia Block. And uh, I'm pretty excited to read this. I used to read a lot of Block when I was a teenager. She writes really nice young adult fiction. Her way of writing is very poetic and unique. And I didn't even know she had released a book recently, so I'm really looking forward to diving into this one. And secondly, I picked up a paperback version of Deathless by Catherine M. Valenti. And this one's been pretty popular. I've seen it making the rounds on YouTube. Um, I'm not totally sure what it's about, but it says that it's based on Russian folklore, which I've never really read much of, so I'm definitely curious about this. Then I picked up Jacob's Jolly by Rebecca Miller. I have no idea what this book is. I just picked it up because of the cover. Look at this awesome cover. I just love the painting and then this beautiful font that you can barely read and the colors, the pink on blue. I just love it. From what I can gather from the synopsis, it's about this young man who lives in 18th century France and then is reincarnated 200 years later as a fly. So I'm hoping to get to these ones pretty soon, but I'm not sure when because I have a couple more books coming up for this month. A coworker of mine just lent me this. It's The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And I didn't know anything about this book. She just ran up to me one day and said, have you read this book? And I was like, no. And she was like, here, take it. <laughs> um, and I'm about halfway through. I'm hoping to finish this within the next week. This is about this young woman who takes the train into London every day. And there's a crossing where the train stops and she sees a couple outside their house almost every day. And she kind of makes up the story about them in her head. And through this really crazy series that I don't want to, a series of events that I don't want to reveal too much about, she comes to find out the real identities of these people and gets entangled with this uh, mystery that's, that they're in. And we also start finding out all this horrible stuff that she's done and her broken marriage and a bunch of stuff like that. It's really, I mean, this cover is totally appropriate. This like swooshing going by landscape is how I totally feel reading this so um, I've definitely been able to rip through this pretty fast and I also picked this up from the library it's a illustrated version of the Nutcracker I feel like I've seen this before I don't know how long this has been around but I used to be obsessed with the Nutcracker story when I was a kid and I've decided that I'm going to do a retelling of the Nutcracker as my next um, comic project so I just basically picked this up as research and lastly for this month I'm going to be reading The Buried Pyramid by Jane Linsgold and I'm actually doing this as a read-along and it's my first read-along here on YouTube that I'll be doing and it's with Effusions of Wit and I'll leave her channel down below. I'm really looking forward to this book actually. I got this from the library but I also got the ebook on my iPad and Tor, the publishing company, is actually giving the ebook away for free so you can get it on Tor.com, that's T-O-R.com. And this book is a, I 
think it's an adventure story with some paranormal or magic stuff um, thrown in there and it's basically about these two teams of rival archaeologists that are digging up this long lost tomb and I really love ancient Egyptian stuff. I wanted to be an Egyptologist for most of my childhood so I'm really looking forward to this and I'm looking forward to doing my first read along. So yeah, that was everything for April and May and what's coming up now in June. If you're wondering why I'm bundled up, it's because it was like 10 degrees here today even though it's June 1st. Um, if you guys have read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. And I was really just dreading reading them so I didn't want to just pick up a book and start reading. But I did manage to get through Wheat Belly and I only gave that book one star and that was because I just um, found that some of the advice in it wasn't very